Hello everyone! Today's video is a continuation of episode 2 where we talked about overcoming any anxiety you may have prior to going to a rock climbing gym and today I am going to share with you how to turn that newfound confidence into an enjoyable and exciting first day at the gym. Stay tuned until the end as we dive into equipment and gear, gym etiquette, climbing basics, fear of heights, how to fall, and of course, mindset. Plus, I'll be sharing with you all another TGC transcendent tip. After watch first things first, rock climbing shoes. Whether you are planning to rent shoes at the gym or go out and buy them, my best advice is to get something that is snug but comfortable. You'll hear a lot that you should get shoes one or two sizes smaller than what you normally wear, but in my experience, I think that is a bit excessive for when you are starting out. Plus, the last thing you want is to have unbearably painful shoes that could take away from the experience. What I believe to be most important is to have shoes that allow you to feel surfaces and have control of your toes and heel. So just remember, snug but comfortable. Time for some basic rock climbing gym etiquette. As you'll come to find out, there are mats that line all the walls. Essentially, mats will cover any area that a climber could fall onto, and this is especially important in the bouldering area. So unless you are climbing, stay away from the walls and climbers. If you are resting in between climbs, stick to the seating areas. You do not want to be hanging around close to the wall while other people are trying to climb. Even if you are scanning routes and determining what to climb, do so from a safe distance. In my short time climbing, I've seen too many close calls where people hanging around, oftentimes beginners, come close to getting squished by climbers on the wall. You don't want to be a Gumby. Safety first and always be courteous to those around you. This brings me to my next point. Scan the route you are about to climb to see the beginning and end point. This is also especially important for bouldering. The reason behind this is to make sure it will not interfere with any climbers to either side of you that are already on the wall. Each route will have the same color for every hold, beginning to end. The way to identify where a route starts is by tape. Each piece of tape equals a limb. For example, this route shows two pieces of tape on the same hold, so this means both of my hands are on this hold. This route, however, has one piece of tape here and another over here, so my hands will be on each individual hold. As far as feet, you'll become familiarized over time to identify which holds are specific to feet, but in general, you can use any feet within your route. Now, most routes will end by topping out at the top. The only exception is when there are also tapes at the end of the route, which signal that is where you will top out. As I mentioned before, there were things about rock climbing that seemed scary to me, like falling when bouldering. Once you're familiar with how to break falls though, your excitement of climbing will override this fear pretty fast. So how do you fall, you might ask? Land on your feet, tuck, and roll onto your back. Never land using your hands, and align your body as much as possible. The key is to allow the fall to take you down onto the mat in a soft tuck and roll manner. Here's what I suggest for everyone, even if you don't have a fear of heights. I did this when I first started, and it helped me out a lot. Practice this little routine before you even start climbing. That way, you'll become familiar with the motion and be more prepared. Time for my TGC tip. I had to learn this the hard way because no one tells you this when you're starting out. 
So after having learned this from my personal experience, I want to share it with you all because it's crucial at the beginning, but really continues to apply throughout the rest of your journey. So here it is. Now that you're ready to step onto the mats full of adrenaline and eager to see what all the fun is about, make sure you go at your own pace. You're going to see climbers do some pretty crazy and awesome stuff that will inspire you to challenge yourself, which it should, but remember this is your first day. Most of those climbers, if not all, have been doing it for years and their bodies are adapted to function at those levels. You do not want to hurt yourself. Like I was on my first day, you might also be a bit intimidated, and that is completely normal. Just remember the things I've mentioned. Have an open and enthusiastic mindset and trust the process, and that it is entirely up to you what you want to do and when you want to do it. With that, focus on yourself and don't compare yourself to anyone. This is about you and your experience. Start off by climbing the easy stuff and focus on having fun. If you see that you're completing the beginner climbs with ease, then you can start trying out harder routes. Your feet, hands, and fingers will get sore and tired quick. This is normal, but also why I recommend sticking to the easy stuff and just having fun on your first day because you'll have plenty of time for more once you come back. Use your chalk. Why? Your hands get sweaty and just a little bit of moisture can be the difference between success and failure. So, the chalk helps absorb any sweat or moisture to increase friction and improve your grip onto the holds. Now that you have practiced falling and have climbed, I suggest practicing falling from the wall from a low distance, especially if you're scared of heights. Take it slow. Get used to being on the wall Climb up only a little bit and get a feel for what jumping off and falling will feel like. Just know you will be safe as long as you follow the steps. And remember, if you don't feel comfortable on a climb, either climb back down using any holds that are comfortable to you or jump onto the mat with the same technique you just learned. Through these methods, you'll slowly overcome the fear of heights. It's all about getting familiarized with the process and building comfort. Once you have reached the top of the climb, most gyms will have distinct holds to help you climb down at which point you can safely jump down. You might be wondering, well how do I know what routes are easy? This is where the rating system comes into play. Most gyms will have a display to guide you on the rating system and how you can determine which routes are beginner friendly. Now, this gets more complex, so I'm only going to tell you guys what you need to know for now. Other countries have their own rating systems, like Germany, Australia, England, and France to name a few. If you want to see a whole video on rating systems, let me know in the comments below. For now, I'm going to focus on a brief overview of the US bouldering system. The standard and most widely used is the V-Scale, named after John Vermin Sherman. The V-Scale goes from V0 through V16. It specifically accommodates beginners as it includes an introductory rating of VB for beginner boulder problems. You might even see VE at some gyms for easy. The important thing to remember Letter grades are the easiest, and after that, the higher the number, the harder it is. For reference, I didn't attempt anything harder than a V1 on my first day. Here is where the mental aspect will kick in, because you will fail, and fail a lot. But, it will become addicting because you'll realize how climbing is like a puzzle and teaches you to think to think differently and figure things out for what works for you. In addition to how much fun you're having, you'll see that you're getting a pretty intense workout all at the same time. If you remember from my first video, 
The physical and intense mental challenge is what made me fall in love right away. This is something intrinsic and that will be different for everyone, but that's the beauty of it. The mental component especially is what had my brain going, training my mind in a way different than any other sport I've experienced. As you'll come to find out on your own, rock climbing requires true mindfulness to get all the benefits of the sport. And when it's applied, you'll see climbing in a whole different way. With all of this in mind, have fun, try a variety of climbs and get a feel for the different types of holds, but keep safety as your priority. Remember, don't overdo it because your body, hands and fingers need time to adapt. Save your fingers and hands to come back for more. This concludes the introduction to rock climbing mini series. I've shared a lot of information, but remember the big takeaways from my TGC tips. Keep an open and enthusiastic mindset and go at your own pace. I'm having so much fun creating these videos and sharing tips to hopefully take your experience to the next level. Stay tuned for my next video where I will be sharing with you all my rock climbing shoe journey and how you can best select your first pair of climbing shoes. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe. If you would like to contribute to my work, my Patreon page will be linked in the description. Any contribution is super helpful. Thank you guys again and happy climbing!